thought the other day, like, when does music begin? Is it the tree that grows in the forest? Is it like the guy that picks out what tree to cut down? Is it the lumberjack? Is it the mill that treats the wood or whatever happens in that process? Is it the guy that goes in and picks the different woods for the luthier? Is it the luthier or the instrument maker who shapes it into an instrument? Is it the guy playing the instrument? Or is it the developer recording the instrument and rebuilding it into software and then offering it back to people? It's a weird notion actually and it's something that I'm getting more and more fascinated by as we go into the deep DNA of music by building instruments. So I ask myself, at which point does the music really begin? And in the case of this video, it's going to begin with Intimate Studio Brass, which is our latest and greatest in our studio series. And it's been a weird library for me. It's one of the few libraries that actually truly put me in like deep procrastination and feeling insecure about myself mode, uh, because the library was more capable than I am as a composer. And it's not just that it comes with a wealth of rich, deep sample articulations. I think it was like 45 different articulations, something like that, with all velocity and round robin and dynamic layer legato and all that. But more importantly, it's a library that is made from four fantastic players. For the most part, if you really work with quality players, in this case, some of Britain's finest, um, you get an equally great product out of it. Um, but you still have to learn how to write for brass and I'm not really a brass writer and I'm not really used to writing uh, sort of jazzy or soulful pop rock kind of brass arrangements, but this library can do it and it can do it to a degree that sounds photorealistic or audio realistic or whatever that word might be. And in this video, we're gonna go deep into that. We're gonna listen to Intimate Studio Brass, isolate the instruments, check out all the legatos and the wealth articulations. Uh, but before we do that, um, I spoke about procrastination, this is just a little side note actually, but I thought it could be just interesting to explain um, why I have this hourglass here. Um, it's not really an hourglass, it's a 25 minute hourglass because I can't focus on anything for an hour at a time. Um, I use it when I procrastinate or if I really feel I'm sort of getting out of my groove and I put it on because it allows me to focus for 25 minutes on any singular task meaning that if I put it on and I write emails, I'll only write emails. If I put it on when I'm making music, I'm only gonna make music. So there can be no distractions. Um, and you have to turn off all notifications, all social media, all that bullshit. And in return, your brain will release a variety of endorphins after 25 minutes. This is a proven method called the Pomodoro method. Um, I thought it was complete BS the first time I heard it, but um, I've used it for a couple of years. Um, I use it on my watch and there's a website, I'll put the link below. Um, where you can also set a timer for 25 minutes. Try it out, it's super cool, it really, really helps. And um, I use it maybe on sort of critical days eight times a day, so I know I get my eight blocks in. Um, what they've learned over time is that if you don't do it, if you procrastinate or interfere with your sort of brain pattern, that singular task, the brain would actually punish you and release other chemicals that have a negative effect on you. It can lead to depression and many other issues. Um, so yeah, just a little blurb. Uh, it had absolutely nothing to do with this video, but um, it has something to do with the demo we're about to hear. So um, I'll see you in the doll, and um, yeah, let's have some fun.
Let's just take it from the very top here with trumpet one playing legato. You can notice it over here as well. And uh, let's go into the articulation matrix here. And there is a wealth of articulations in this library here, starting with the legato. But um, if we just take a brief look here, you got staccato, two variations of staccatismo, macato, sforzando, different types of sustains, trills, a wealth of muted articulations, including staccatismo, macato, sustains, all these wah kind of sounds. You also have a performance category here with arc short, arc medium, arc long, and then a variety of different kind of deep sample rhythmic patterns. So it can be triplets or da da or da da da. We also have effects, including flutter tongue, three different types of scoops. You got do it slow and fast, slow falls and fast falls, even disco drops to match our intimate studio strings, ripped shakes and shakes long, pretty much covering everything that you would expect from a professional brass group in terms of standard articulations and even advanced articulations. But let's get back to the legato here and listen to Trumpet One do its thing here in the beginning of the demo. And to me, it immediately lends itself to... And let's take a listen to Trumpet 2 playing legato. The next part of this uh, cantina scene inspired demo um, is led by our studio steel drums, just an awesome library with a wealth of microphones and ways of handling the steel drum with different types of mallets. <laughs> And then the first more elaborate part of the brass writing starts here by playing a legato patch, both using trumpet one, trumpet two and trombone. But let's say that the trombone is hitting a little too much in the sort of mid range. We only want the trumpets. And then even adding a third channel here, playing two different saxophones from our studio saxophone trio as well. Um, they're really designed to work together. All these libraries record in the same studio, same players, same engineers. So all our studio series libraries, whether it's string, sax, brass, woodwinds, it all goes together. And then adding both bass trombone and trombone to the mix, you can see these are two different patches here, helping to augment the chords here and playing counterpoint sometimes. And then in this mid proportion of the demo, it's playing uh, this sort of messed up version of the fourth theme, I believe, uh, using both bass trombone, tenor trombone, trumpet one legato, and then also a patch from our saxophone trio.
there's also a little bit of studio vintage organ action going on. You can actually hear a little bit of the hum in the background here. Let me switch it off here. And then there's all these little small parts of the demo, it's just little ornaments and stuff like helping with the realism. For example, right now the whole quartet is loaded, so trumpet one, trumpet two, trombone and bass trombone, and they're playing a Mikado Sfrasando. The cool thing about the articulation system here is that you can always just double click and then choose whatever articulation you want. So let's say you want an effects in here and you load it. And that way you can build your own matrix super fast just by double clicking here and picking out different articulations and build your own matrix. You can also control the key switches and many other things here. But let's take it from the top here, just starting with Staccato, Staccatismo and Staccatismo 2. Mikados. Mikados with Sforzando. You got sustained, sustains with vibrato. We have normal trills, and then we have single trills, both in whole notes and half notes. Let me just show But that's just the beginning of an immensely dense hierarchy of articulations. Let's go into the muted section here and listen a little bit to the staccatissimo, both straight, marcato straight and sustained straight, and then also play with harmon mutes. We actually have two different variations of mutes in the library as well. And on top of that, you got your wire shorts, wire longs and all that. And of course, everything is sampled in multiple dynamics, so you can really, depending on how hard you play, make the ensemble burn more or less. We also have these more sort of ornamental type of articulations on the performance here. Toplets, triplets, da-da and da-da-da. It's almost easier just to say them like that. These are both sampled in chromatic order, in velocities and with round robin as well. So you can really, really do a lot of expression with them. Uh, let me just try to build a quick um, articulation matrix here. Again, you can see I'm just double clicking down here and building my key switches in real time. That's how fast it is. Four patches right away. We also have a speed control here for all the articulations here, so you can really have it match your host tempo and you can also go half speed or double. Let me show you here. Or go totally crazy here on double tempo. We also got these super useful da da and da 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 articulations. And you can hear how quick it is for me just to express myself dynamically. This is just triggered on velocities. We also got these sweet, jazzy, soulful data articulations. And again, these are also velocity and run robin based.
And they really take time control well. We're actually playing it half as fast as normal tempo. Let me just double it here. We also got these runs here, and if you use the pitch bender, you can change the direction of the run. We also have runs here in octaves playing both slow and fast. And it's just super cool to have all these gesticulations here at your fingertips because you can really do real writing. There's certain things you can do with staccatos and you can see we have the wealth here of both staccatos and different variations of staccatismos and macados. But something like da da da, that kind of feel, it's so special and there's actually legato even though if it's single note based. So we tend to record these things as they actually are both in velocities and round robin because you just can't mimic it with traditional multi samples. For example here with the da da da. But if that wasn't enough, we also have a category here of effects, including flutter tongue, three types of scoops here, two types of do it, falls at different speeds, disco drops, rips, shakes, and shakes long here as well. Let's begin the journey here with scoops slow. Or maybe you want it even faster than that. So again, three speeds of scoops. And just to give you an idea about how crazy we go on these things, each of these scoops we just listened to are recorded chromatically in every key. You got round robin, so you actually have alternations every time you play them. And then they're dynamically stacked as well. And you can really hear in the scoops here, even if I repeat something fast, you get that natural variation. So you can play the same chord and it still sounds alive. And again, it's so easy. Let's say, well, that's a little too big sounding right now. Let me just remove the trombone and the bass trombone. You're playing exactly the same articulation still. You just remove the other instruments. And that's when we talk about the modular approach. It's so easy just to assemble stuff and play. All right, and for the do it articulations, we're definitely gonna need to load the trombones and the bass trombones back again here. These are very glissando like motions. Let's try the faster one here. It's actually funny to play them in a sort of more aleatoric style. We also have rips and shakes and shakes long. So this was just a quick little glance over both our traditional articulations, our muted, our performance-based articulations, and our effects. But uh, let's go back to the demo here and listen to the last part of it. There's some cool things going on here, particularly towards the mid part of it. There's also a variety of synthesizers all coming from the Prophet X um, Prophet 5 add-on pack. Um, I'm just playing the analog keyboard for bass, pad, and lead kind of synth support.
And then we got this super funky break here going into the sort of second part of the composition uh, with a beautiful solo trombone solo. And then there's my favorite part of the song here, which is has sort of a up dine kind of legato motion, both mixing instrument studio brass together with our saxophone. It's really, really just a neat little break. <laughs> And the saxophone is super sweet here. Um, it's also velocity based, so when you click hard on the velocities, you can see it a couple of times here, you get more sort of elaborate dynamics into the saxophone where the player really lets loose. Um, try to check it out. It's pretty hard to hear that it's not real in context to the whole piece. <laughs> And then the rest of the demo sort of repeats the chorus from the first part here, but with a somewhat uh, extensive saxophone solo. You know, when you write for brass, one thing I learned when writing this demo, that it's really important to give breaks in your solos. Um, I think sometimes when we have instruments, we tend to think like, well, you can, you can hold on to sustain as long as you want, but um, keep the player in mind what would feel natural when you write for brass and um, instruments of this sort of deep nature.